Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Josephine. Welcome back to my library. I'm so very glad you're here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you one of my favorite stories by one of my favorite authors. What's interesting is that this story is 110 years old. It's written by a woman named Elsa Beskow, and Elsa Beskow was Swedish, which means she grew up in the country of Sweden, and when she wrote this story, she wrote it for children in her country, and it was written originally in Swedish. But it was so wonderful and so beautiful, she also did the illustrations, that soon it was published in countries all over the world. My mother had the story read to her when she was a little girl growing up in Germany. And then she read it to me when I was growing up here in the United States. And then I read it to my children, and now I'm gonna read it to you. I think why it captured my imagination so much was because as a little girl, I liked to spend time out in the forests. I did it whenever I could. And I like to look at the tiny things. I like to get really close, even though it was meant just laying in the grass in my own backyard and trying to find little tiny things, bugs, creatures, insects, even sometimes mice. I, I like to find them and watch them closely and observe them. So it was interesting to imagine that there were also little tiny people. I watched the world closely, and so I could imagine being tiny in it. And in Elsa Beskow books, that's exactly what there are. Teeny tiny little people who live in the forest. We can't see them because they hide from us. Also, because they're fiction. But when I was little, I still liked to imagine that they were there. And I liked that world of imagination so much that I carried that all the way into my grown-up life and ended up, you know, sometimes making things that kind of represented that world. In fact, this treehouse that I always have with me in my library, I made it and I made the tiny little woodland creatures that I like to imagine live and play in the forests and in a house like this. So imagination that from books that you read as a child can live with you for your whole life long and give you all kinds of enjoyment. So I'm really happy to be able to share this beautiful book with you by Elsa Beskow. And it will be one of many of the Elsa Beskow books that I will share with you. So if you like this one, you'll probably want to stay tuned to this playlist of Elsa Beskow stories so that you can see more and more of them and spend more time in the wonderful world of Elsa Beskow. The story we're starting with is called Children of the Forest. Deep in the forest, under the curling roots of an old pine tree, was a small house. Warm and dry in winter, cool and airy in summer, it was the home of one of the forest people. He lived there with his wife and four children, Tom, Harriet, Sam, and Daisy. Wild strawberries and mushrooms grew by their door, and they had all the pots, pans, chairs, beds, tables, knives, forks, and spoons that they could possibly need. Sheltered under the pine tree branches, they hardly felt the autumn gales, and if it rained, the children crept underneath a giant toadstool to keep dry. All the children wore red and white spotted caps. If strangers came into the forest, they curled up still as stone for all the world like four red and white spotted mushrooms. But most of the time, they were perfectly safe. Then they played at hide and seek with the squirrels who lived upstairs in the tree. Squirrels are scatty, thoughtless creatures, and sometimes they forgot what games they were playing and then the children could catch them. Mostly, they were kind-hearted, and often they remembered to bring Harriet a nut or two from their store. On summer evenings, the children went down to the pool to see their friends, the frogs. Buffo, who was big and fat and kind, was especially fond of little Daisy, and he would always listen to her troubles. Renata, shouted Harriet, come and tell us how many insects you've caught. Renata the bat pretended to be very angry at being disturbed, but secretly she liked playing with the children. 
Sometimes she would even give Harriet a ride, as long as she promised to hold on tight. Not everyone in the wood was friendly. Vara the viper once lay in wait for the children as they played under the pine tree. Their father saw him hiding in the ferns and ran out in his thick pine cone suit with his birch bark shield to fight the snake. Tom, Harriet, Sam, and Daisy watched. And as the battle went first this way and then that, but at last their father was so quick with his needle sharp spear that he pinned the viper to the ground. Proudly, the four children picked up the dead snake where shall we bury him? They asked. Just as the children were wondering what to do, an old hedgehog came shuffling up. I'll take that snake away, he offered with a sly grin. He scuttled off, dragging it so fast that the children forgot to ask him where he was going to bury it. Then Tom and Sam cut hawthorn spears of their own and poked them in the ant's nest but the ants swarmed out to defend their home and stung the boys until they cried. Silly boys, said their mother as she put dock leaf ointment on their stings. Never hurt the creatures of the forest unless they mean you harm. In the middle of the forest is a cave where a troll lives. No one knows his name. One day, when the children were out berrying, Tom saw that the biggest blueberries grew closest to his cave. I'm going up there, he said bravely. And so am I, said Sam and Harriet and Daisy. Ho, 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 said a huge voice far above them. Berries and baskets tumbled everywhere as the children scrambled back down the slope. They didn't even look back to see who it was. If they had, they would have seen that the old troll of the forest was laughing. It was not often that he had a chance to give someone a fright. Soon, they were in the middle of harvest time and everyone had their work to do. The little brown cupboards in the roots of the pine had to be filled with bottles of berry jam dried seeds, nuts, and fruit to last through the winter. The children's father showed them how to recognize the little pearly white button mushrooms, which would make delicious pies and puddings when the snow was thick on the ground. Sam did not want to listen, and he sat playing with an apple pip, but his father was very angry. Sam, if you make a mistake, we may all die. You must never pick a mushroom unless you know it is good to eat. Everyone's hands were sticky with berry juice and the house was full of the smell of newly picked mushrooms. Harvesting was over, but there was still a lot to do. The fruit must be cleaned and polished for one rotten berry could spoil the whole crop. Every ripe brown nut was stored neatly away and each mushroom carefully sliced and threaded so it could be hung up to dry. The children picked cotton grass and combed it smooth so their mother could spin it into silky thread. Then she would weave it into rugs or knit pretty creamy white sweaters for the winter. The days grew shorter and the moon shone bright and cold as a silver coin cutting little gray shadows in the pine branches and telling all the forest creatures that summer really was at an end. Mist settled in the hollows like white breath and the children played at leapfrog with the rabbits until it was time for bed. Sometimes they found forest fairies dancing and singing in the moonlight and joined in their games. Come back tomorrow night, the children would beg. Perhaps, laughed the fairies as they slipped away, light as thistledown. There was no telling where or when they would return. Today, we are going to see Mrs. Owl, said the children's mother. It's time for you three, Tom, 
Harriet, and Sam to go to school. Mrs. Owl knows more about our plants, trees, and flowers than anyone, and she will teach you all the ways of the forest. Tom, Harry, and Sam looked up at the huge dark eyes of the old owl and felt shy. And for once, they did not say a word. There were many other animals in school besides Mrs. Owl's own three children, and some of them the children already knew. There were two cheeky hedgehogs, two small frogs who had only just stopped being tadpoles, some of the older squirrels, five rather silly rabbits, and lots of small birds, chaffinches, tits, and jays, and even a young woodpecker. Mrs. Owl taught them the language of all that squeaks, swims, flies, or runs. She taught them to listen to the message of the wind and to see the approach of spring even before the first snowdrop. She taught them to keep well hidden from humans and to be wary of all hunting animals, fox, stoat, and dog. Then came the first winter weather. The wind shrieked through the pines, scattering dead leaves and twigs and sending little animals tumbling to their warm homes. The children's father put up heavy wooden doors to make their home weather tight as the first white snowflakes began to settle. Shivering, the children put on thick sweaters and caps and stepped out into the bitter cold. Even the hare had put on his winter coat. If only we could sleep right through until spring, like dormice, grumbled Sam as he helped his mother with the firewood. Next morning, the sky was a clear bright blue and the snowy branches glittered in the sun. Shouting with excitement, the children ran outside, stamping in and out of snowdrifts and rolling in the snow until they looked like huge snowballs themselves. The hare was as happy as the children, and he raced up looking for a new game to play. Tom and Sam harnessed him to the sledge, and away they went like the wind. Harriet! Daisy, called their father, we must make up a basket of food from our cupboards. It has been so cold that some of our friends may not have enough to eat. That evening, sleepy and warm, the children sat round the fire, listening to their father tell stories his father told him when he was a boy about trolls and fairies, storms and strange cities from long ago. Winter days, dark and snowy, went by one after another until at last came the first warm breeze. Spring was in the air. Anemones and snowdrops raised their cool white heads and branches became thick and knobby with new buds. Birds began singing and melting ice splashed into every stream. Everything was rustling and restless, and the children raced about almost mad with excitement. They paddled and splashed in the stream, damming it to build a water mill. No one cared how wet or muddy they were, for no child of the forest can ever catch a cold. Everyone in the forest was busy in the bright sunshine. Birds began gathering twigs and moss, and soon from every nest and burrow came the cry of newborn creatures. Tom, Harriet, Sam, and Daisy were amazed to find that they had a new round pink baby brother of their own too. A new year was beginning in the forest. And this is where we must leave the children. But if you like, think about them and their forest friends. And that way, their story will never end. Well, that's where our story ends for today. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed reading it to you. And we'll hear more stories from Elsa Beskow because they're wonderful, aren't they? <laughs>